Sometimes I wonder whether I made a mistake in pursuing a PhD in quantum physics. I'm in physics largely because I have a knack for numbers. I understood the mathematics of physics. The actual physics itself, I am not that talented whatsoever. Never cared too much about breaking things apart or digging into how things work or figuring out the material world. It was just mathematics. But it wasn't always that case. In the beginning, up until seventh grade, I was actually pretty bad in math. Like, I remember my parents, they were like uh, my Russian parents. They scold, scolded me very hard many times. Like, Yura, ты что, дурак, что ли? They were oftentimes scolding me uh, when trying to explain math because I wouldn't get it. But it was in seventh grade when I purely for ambitious reason, wanted to study math. And it was because I wanted to be the most intelligent kid in the classroom. And I realized that the people who were considered the smartest were the ones that knew math. So I had no actual interest out of the topic itself. It was a purely competitive, ambitious want. And I don't know why, but I valued this quality of intelligence. And so I was hanging out with these two kids, one of which ended up going to Oxford and like was the best math student in in all of Canada where I grew up. And uh, I did get better in seventh and eighth grade. I got pretty good, pretty comfortable with math and ended up going into high school into a special enriched program, like a program for gifted kids, so to say. And they had extra classes, more advanced classes in math and science in uh, French, English, and so, and they taught mathematics very well. They made it very fun by having math contests. By having math contests, they taught children how to problem solve, and it was interesting. They were applying math, and they were doing it with very important human qualities. Namely, there was an an aspect of competition between each other, between all the students, because it's a math contest, you're competing with one another. And there was also a collaborative aspect because you were um, trying to solve the problem oftentimes together, figure out that then you, you would talk to one another afterwards. There was a lot of collaborative spirit too. And this problem solving skill was hugely in my favor in terms of mathematics, sciences, blah, blah, blah. And I thought physics was just mathematics, but applied. It is, but it's more, it's, it's not as simple as just plugging in the numbers into the formula. In high school level math, yes. But later on, it gets a little, it gets a little tricky. So I went into university, into college, uh, studying math and physics. I ended with a decent GPA, something like three, three, seven. I had some experimental research under my belt. My GREs were bad, and the school I went to was not some big name. It was some small liberal arts college, so not, not something super impressive like Harvard. But nonetheless, I somehow got into a grad school, into a master's program. This was also during COVID that I started, and this was immensely hard. Physics is indeed a very difficult subject. I don't even know how I got through it, actually. I think part of it was largely luck. It was all these Hamiltonians, Lagrangians, perturbation theory, partition functions, canonical ensembles, like what? And if I show you the mathematics, most people, they, they, they freak out. I wanted to shoot myself too. I had to learn this stuff practically on my own because it was during COVID. So a lot of coffee, a lot of weed during this time, and uh, a lot of playing guitar too, because I really did not like studying the physics. I took quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics one, three times during the span of two years. I took quantum mechanics two, twice. In the whole, from my undergraduate to PhD level, I took quantum mechanics as a class about 10 times. It's hard, uh, but somehow I found myself graduating and I ended up in Europe doing a PhD in physics.
in quantum computing or a third year. Now I want to now I want to say all respect to the subject of physics. The subject of physics has has given me so much in terms of my worldview, how I think about things, how I reason through things. It's very impressive. Whenever you pick up girls and you say, "Yeah, I study physics," really nice. I'm very grateful for all this, but it's painful. It's very, very painful. And it feels also in many ways not rewarding. And a big contemplation that I've been having that I want to open up about is, is this dilemma of how to deal with something when you feel that it's not your subject, when it's not your thing. Because part of me throughout all these years was feeling that I should keep going because I'm not a quitter. And I kept asking myself, is it true that I want to quit physics because it's hard and that's like the instinct that anyone has and I have to overcome it? Or is it true that it's just not my thing and I have to just let it go? And it's like the quote, by Einstein, everyone is a genius, but if you teach a fish to climb a tree, it will live its whole life thinking it's stupid. And Einstein didn't actually, say, I don't think Einstein actually said that. What do you guys think about this? I'm curious about people's thoughts. But in any case, I went to a liberal arts college and there I took classes in economics, arts history, history, literature, I took a lot of philosophy, I took a lot of interesting classes that I thought also helped me with my worldview on things. And very interesting stuff too, a lot of it which I will share in this channel. And I wondered to myself, should I have gone to study economics? I have a, a big interest with economics, but I think on a professional level, it might be a little a little different too. Then I thought maybe I should have studied pure mathematics. But people don't know how rigorous pure mathematics is. Mathematics in general, but like just plain pure mathematics. Oof, oof. People do not know this. And this is a little bit unfortunate because it influences a way of thinking, a way of thinking that I think would serve the world a lot better if more people understood how you must define everything, how you must get right to the core, to the very foundational idea, the very, what does it mean? What does it mean? And in mathematics, you define everything, you define everything. There's like, there's assumptions that you, you start off with, but generally speaking, it's very, very painful, very tedious. So I know that my heart really lies in music, actually. Everything about it, I really enjoy. I enjoy listening to music. I enjoy playing music. I play flute, guitar, some keys. I sing a little. I enjoy playing around in Ableton Live, DJing too. Music is definitely where my heart is at. And I'll share a lot of my projects in through the course of this channel. My production knowledge in Ableton, my mixes, songs I made. Uh, but in music, I'm a nobody. So I'm a nobody in music and I'm a struggling PhD student in physics. A subject that is awfully painful and I feel a little bit distant from. So that's why I dedicate this newly made channel to open up and give uh, to the world that which I am. All the things that I've learned and perhaps some value will come of it to someone. I will share and explore here my thoughts on quantum theory, on economics, social theories, um, art, Music, computation, AI is a big topic in my mind. Social commentaries. We'll talk about women and men, drugs, politics, everything. To everything. To everything. No, no censors. No censors. No, uh, no censorship. 
just brutally honest. Yeah. My mind is burning. <laughs>